Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to the RDS. I'm delighted to introduce you to What Can STEM Education Offer a Changing World? An event that looks at the thinking that drives ESB Science Blast 2021. Since its foundation in 1731, the RDS has been dedicated to our mission to see Ireland thrive culturally and economically. RDS Foundation is the way we realise that mission today through our impactful work in the arts, agriculture, enterprise, equestrian and science. Science education has been to the fore in how we deliver this mission for generations. Today, the RDS builds on this legacy by developing and delivering Ireland's premier primary school science education program, ESB Science Blast. The RDS knows that the return from our multi-million euro investment in a STEM program like ESB Science Blast will be cumulative. It equips the next generation with essential skills for the 21st century, encouraging them to be curious, think critically, value creativity, and to have the confidence to communicate their ideas with a strong voice. All inherently scientific skills, but also life skills. Skills that will allow them to become the problem solvers of the future. ESB Science Blast, a programme that has been developed and delivered by RDS, has incredible potential to shape a generation. To ensure that we maximise this opportunity, there are three areas that RDS will focus on over the next 10 years. Building the programme into a household name. Building long-term strategic partnerships with industry and education stakeholders and looking at how we can create a shift in delivering and value in education. There are multiple factors as to why a child will opt for sciences in school, choose a STEM university course, or take up an apprenticeship. But we know that primary school children are open to new possibilities in a way that older children are not. Delivering impact at this formative stage of a child's educational pathway has positively influenced their later academic choices. The government has stated great ambition in this area, one that mirrors our own. That is to make Ireland a European leader in STEM education by 2026. If Ireland is to be at the forefront of the digital revolution, we must be a leader in nurturing, developing and deploying STEM talent. Positioning STEM from a young age will be a key foundation in this. It is not possible for the RDS to do this alone and strong partnerships are at the very heart of our success. It would not be possible to develop and deliver ESB Science Blast without our title sponsor ESB. I would also like to record our heartfelt thanks to our other key funders, particularly the Nocton Foundation, the Irish American Partnership, Stereopack, Jones Inter Engineering, Devendish Nutrition, Matrix, Irish Aid, Forge na Gaelga, and our other partners and individual donors. I extend our gratitude to them for their continued commitment to ESB Science Blast. For those of you not on this journey with us, but who share our ambition, I invite you to join us. The disruption to education this year has been difficult for educators and students alike. The buzz and energy at our events in the RDS, Limerick and Belfast will be sorely missed. I'm pleased to say that we've moved ESB Science Blast online to facilitate participation this year. Classes are investigating their questions and will meet judges virtually for their feedback. To inspire their investigations, we have created a virtual ESB Science Blast world. This is the background to eight fantastic STEM educational programmes, four in Irish and four in English. Today, I'm delighted to showcase this ESB Science Blast TV programme and share with you a short video to give you a sense of what the 2021 programme will achieve. Hello 
and welcome to ESB Science Blast TV, delivered by the RDS. I'm John. And I'm Clara. And we are very excited because we've taken everything that's great about ESB Science Blast and stuffed it all into this amazing jam-packed TV show. We're going to take everything we've learned earlier about gravity, centripetal force and friction, and we're going to supersize it. Now, we all know that birds flap their wings to fly, but have you ever wondered how an airplane flies? ESB Science Blast TV is really quite exciting and innovative and probably more relevant than it's ever been. Here at ESB Science Blast, we love investigating questions, so we figured we'd do just that. Do you think this small weight could stop this heavy bowling ball? Or would the bowling ball drop, smashing everything that's underneath it? We are really excited to bring this to the screens and into the classrooms. What this program will be doing is really by showing it in the classroom, it will support, inspire, and really, I guess, be a conversation starter for classes on getting their projects started. We really hope that it's as exciting for the children as it is for us behind the scenes. Now, here at ESB Science Blast, we think science is cool, obviously, but we're not the only ones. There are loads of other people who love science too. And not only that, they also have really cool jobs that involve science. Yep, and today we are really excited to be joined by one of those people, Corey Kuypert. He's an engineer that designs roller coasters for a living, and he designed the amazing Ku Cullen roller coaster at Taylor Park. Hi, Corey. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm super excited to talk about roller coasters today. Now, Lucy, what exactly is a marine biologist and what do you do? A marine biologist is someone who studies or researches anything about the sea or something that's in the sea. Lucy, next question is from Kitty. Hi Lucy, my question for you is, how do you turn a shark and why do you do it? So today, we're going to investigate the first law of motion, also known as the law of inertia. Have you ever wondered how wind can make electricity? As we can see, the wind is moving the blades and we're generating electricity. And the bulb is in It's so cool! Okay, John, in three, two, one, go! <laughs> <laughs> so if you've been inspired by anything you've seen here today, why not sign up for ESB Science Blast at ESBScienceBlast.com. I'm delighted that ESB Science Blast TV will be available to every primary classroom in the country this year to continue inspiring curiosity and class investigations. I wish to give a special acknowledgement to the teachers who in a particularly difficult year are participating in the ESB Science Blast program. Today we are talking about a changing world and how STEM education can influence this change. Later, we will be joined by Fanula O'Reilly and Nessa Datanaut to hear her personal perspective on the topic as she speaks with Jess Kelly. Before that, I am delighted to introduce our keynote speaker, Norma Foley, our Minister for Education. Dear Glair, it's an orvor dom se veliv erno called untoch specialtista. Hello to you all. I am delighted to join you today and I'd like to begin by expressing my thanks to you, Geraldine, for your kind introduction and to the team, particularly those in the RDS who work on ESB Science Blast for asking me to speak with you and indeed to join you today. Thank you all. ESB Science Blast is a truly wonderful event, championing pupil-led investigation into science, technology, engineering and math. It is hugely popular in schools across Ireland, and rightly so. For those of you who have been involved or have attended a Science Blast event previously, you will know that its benefits are enormous. The pupils who get involved gain in confidence, in creativity, and come together as wonderful class groups. Their problem-solving skills and communication skills are enhanced. It is through this group-based investigation that true scientific inquiry occurs. In the words of Sir Ken Robinson, most great learning happens in groups. Collaboration is the stuff of growth. 
the RDS, ESB, and the other key sponsors of this event, such as the Nocton Foundation, Irish American Partnership, and Jones Engineering, are to be commended for their continued support of such a fantastic event. I particularly want to acknowledge how the organizers have been supported in maintaining the ethos of Science Blast this year as it transfers to this wonderful online environment. I am also delighted to see so many of our key education partners in attendance at the event today. School and learning has always been about much more than the formal curriculum and what happens during class. It is hugely positive that our students have not missed out on valuable opportunities such as Science Blast in the midst of COVID-19. I know that running Science Blast this year has required even greater innovation, ingenuity, flexibility and commitment than it does under normal circumstances. I am truly grateful to every school community who made it possible nonetheless. The experience of the past year has been a reminder of the huge importance of STEM, from the developers of the vaccines against COVID-19 to the medical professionals caring for so many of our loved ones and relatives. I include too the statistical experts supporting public health modelling, scientists, mathematicians, engineers and technology experts all of whom have played a pivotal role in managing the impact of the COVID-19 virus on our society. Now more than ever, many of us appreciate how much our day-to-day -day lives are influenced by, supported by, and ultimately improved by STEM professionals and their boundless curiosity about our world and the forces that shape it. This striving for greater knowledge aligns with the natural curiosity of children who are always asking why? Why is that happening? Why is that so? Their curiosity leads them to explore their environment, problem solve, to invent and indeed to discover. All of these are key to their learning and development. Events like ESB Science Blast help foster this curiosity and empower our young learners not only to ask the questions but to also investigate and find solutions. It is not about finding one right answer, but about working together as a team to generate solutions and identify the best pathway forward. STEM education is a key priority for the Department of Education, as well as government as a whole. One of the key elements of our approach is promoting STEM for all learners, as set out in our STEM Education Policy Statement 2017 to 2026. We need to engage children and their urge to explore by engaging them in STEM from a very early age in a manner that is engaging and indeed accessible. Children learn through play and for this reason we place a particular emphasis on hands-on, multi-sensory and creative experiences. ESB Science Blast is a great enabler of this type of child-centric and playful learning. And this year, I must commend them in their innovation for reimagining their programme to be offered in an online space. Well done to you all. There have been lots of ways for classes all around the country to get involved online, from using bespoke lesson plans to guide class investigations, to getting inspired by ESB Science Blast on TV, which, as of yesterday, is being broadcast directly into classrooms around Ireland. I was so delighted to note that each episode on ESB Science Blast TV will be available in English and in Irish, continuing in the Science Blast tradition of creating an equal platform for STEM, as Berla agus as in education, we place the child and learning at the heart of all that we do. It is vital that every child has access to the very best that education has to offer and that they feel supported within the school environment. In this regard, the inclusive nature of the ESB Science Blast is to be welcomed. 
Science Blast is a whole class event so that everyone feels included and has an opportunity to positively contribute. Indeed, every year you can be certain that many students may start out as reluctant participants but are soon pulled in by the fun challenge of Science Blast. For many, I am sure that Science Blast is the start of a lifelong adventure with STEM. We do not know what the world will be like for the next generation, but we do know that thriving in it will require creativity, critical thinking, flexibility and teamwork. I thank ESB Science Blast and the broader school communities for all the work you do to promote these skills in our children and indeed our young people, and in so doing, helping to build a better and brighter tomorrow. Thank you, Minister. We look forward to working with you and the Department of Education in the months and years ahead. We're also joined today by Fanula O'Reilly and Jess Kelly. Fanula O'Reilly is a systems engineer, director of the NASA Space Apps Challenge and a NASA data nut, who's committed to raising the profile of women in STEM. Our host for today is Jess Kelly, technology correspondent, presenter of News Talk, Tech Talk. We're delighted to have both Fanula and Jess with us today for what should be a thought-provoking discussion. I will now hand you over to Jess. Thank you so much for that introduction, Geraldine. I'm delighted to be part of this special ESB Science Blast 2021 event, looking at what STEM education can offer a changing world. And who better to explore this topic with than the brilliant Fanula O'Reilly, who is a fantastic ambassador for all things science, technology, engineering and maths. Uh, Fanula, thank you so much for your time. You have a brilliant story to tell that takes us right through your life up to where you get involved with NASA, which is a fantastic uh, middle point for any story. You might just start tell, uh, by telling us a little bit about your own background and the path that led you to being involved with NASA. Absolutely. Uh, I am a NASA data knot and I'm also a director for NASA's International Space Apps Challenge. Uh, the data knots program is an open innovation program where technologists, data scientists, engineers, we all get to work on really innovative projects and uh, we're also able to create innovation using data science techniques. Uh, with Space Apps, it is a, a really cool, uh, really large uh, effort from NASA to get more technologists, more engineers, mathematicians, anyone that's working in STEM together uh, in the name of earth science and space innovation. So being a director for Space Apps in Washington DC, which is where I am right now, it, it's, it's so amazing because we get 25,000 uh, pe uh, people that work in STEM and um, we get them uh, working together internationally. Uh, we are partnered with the European Space Agency, the Je Japanese Exploration Agency, the Canadian Space Agency, and more in this collaborative effort and it's all in the name of innovation so um, my I guess my background in STEM it started when I was uh, just a kid I didn't have a, a mom or dad that were working in STEM industry but I did get exposed at a summer math and science um, uh, course that I was taking to uh, to coding and I, I got to meet for the first time uh, engineers and uh, technologists from a wide variety of backgrounds. I met um, biologists and, and coders and I, I was exposed to this world and I already had interests in math but it made a world of a difference for me because I was able to really find out what it meant to be an engineer and ultimately that's kind of what set my, my sights on actually becoming one myself. Yeah, it's incredible when you get exposure to things like this from a very young age. You know, I was never the, the most book smart in my class, but I was fascinated when it came to breaking things, building them and then explaining what I had done. And I think that's not something that necessarily fits in with the classic curriculum. Do you think that more could be done to try and expose children to a variety of methods of engaging with science, technology, engineering and maths from a very young age? 
Oh, absolutely. And I'm a proponent for hopefully one day coding is a subject that is taught uh, in schools um, at all ages, something like like writing and, and English and literature. I think uh, it's one of those skills that uh, the earlier you're exposed to it, uh, it's just so useful and you can use it in so many different ways. And um, I do think it's it's really important, especially to get young girls, uh, uh, show them, show them how amazing it can be to be a, a woman that works in STEM industry because there are so few of us and um, it's it's important to show girls that you know you absolutely can go into this industry too just because it's historically been dominated by men doesn't mean that we don't need more women because it's so valuable to have diverse ideas uh, at the table and um, but when it comes to to getting more kids exposed I absolutely think it's so important because without my own experiences um, at 15 years old learning how to code for the first time I wouldn't have known that I wanted to become an engineer I was always a, a quite a curious kid and I was uh, I'd say maths was my best subject but until a, an outside a teacher of mine stepped in and said wow you're really good at this why don't you consider maybe um, going into this you know for your profession uh, it, it took that that extra uh, someone to to make me see that maybe that is something that I could do. And I'm so grateful for that opportunity because um, I, I wouldn't have become an engineer without it. One of the brilliant things about the ESB Science Blast competition and event is that it exposes children and people of all ages to different aspects of science. What I find fascinating though, is that a lot of the jobs that our friends have, for example, maybe didn't exist 10 or 15 years ago. There's so much innovation going on in terms of the tech and science space. Like you mentioned things like, uh, you know, being a data scientist, that's fascinating. Do you think that, you know, more excitement and hype needs to be made of this ever changing platform and arena that we're in so that people can see the potential and maybe if a job doesn't exist, they could make one up for themselves? Well, I think more, uh, more needs to be done to get um, information out. All of my, so I'm also a science communicator. Um, I'm a correspondent on a television series here in, in the United States. And I get to travel around uh, exploring different science and uh, technology um, and math and engineering. And uh, I get to meet really amazing women in STEM. It's all about women in STEM. Uh, Miranda Cosgrove, she's a host on the show. Many may remember her from iCarly. And Gina Davis, the, the, the Hollywood legend, she is also an executive producer on the show and it just spotlights women who work in these awesome industries and we get to learn in the process and I think if more people just saw the science behind things um, they, they would naturally be more curious and more interested but oftentimes we don't put science and technology at the forefront in media and entertainment but I, I think the more the more that we do that the more naturally people will gravitate towards these industries um, I, I'm proud to work on a show where we do get to explore in a very fun, cool way um, science because uh, more people should be seeing exactly how awesome it is. And I think it, they would naturally gravitate uh, towards these things. All scientists and engineers that I know are screaming from the rooftops, explaining science to as many people as possible. But sometimes we're just not heard because we need the platforms. So as, as things continue to change in the media and we get more women at the forefront of telling our own stories, I think that we'll start hearing, hearing more about uh, uh, these kinds of industries uh, themselves. Yeah, as turbulent and as traumatic, I suppose, as the last 12 or 13 months has been for the world, a great thing that's come to the fore is the importance of science and the importance of strong science communicators as well, because there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of information out there, but what you want is someone who can explain it in a clear and concise way and also make it engaging so that you can learn along the way. You mentioned there particularly about uh, women in STEM and trying to encourage more women into it. There's a lot of talk about the four C's of the 21st century. They are communication, collaboration, critical thinking and creativity. For me, one that should be in there though is confidence because you could mm -hmm. tick a lot of those other boxes, but you may think, oh, maybe I shouldn't be in that room or maybe I shouldn't raise my hand. How do we tackle that problem and encourage and build up young girls in particular to join the conversation from a very young age? Uh, you made some really, really great points there. And I agree on, on, on 
everything that you said, uh, especially confidence being one of those four key C words. And confidence without it, I don't think you, you wouldn't be able to even get up in front of a room and be able to explain maybe the science of, of something that you're working on. And I think being able to tackle uh, negative thinking or bringing yourself down, um, some of the imposter syndrome that we sometimes see, um, it's it's important to be able to overcome those obstacles because you you know you absolutely deserve to be in the room. I, I've definitely had to overcome challenges like imposter syndrome myself, and to to overcome. I mean, walking into a room sometimes I, I often would be the only black woman or the only person of color um, on top of being one of very few women in the room to begin with, and it was something that was not lost on me because sometimes I did feel like I was sticking out like a sore thumb and. Sometimes it, it affects your confidence being able to speak up and speak out, especially uh, uh, without having your, your voice waver. But I think, you know, it's okay if your voice wavers, if you're, if you're, if you know that you've got the skill and, and if you have the degrees and the experience to back it up, absolutely use your voice. And I'm a proponent for doing that uh, because it, your work speaks louder than, than anything. And I, I think that I've had opportunities to, to, step up to the plate and really show what I'm capable of doing. And I'd say to anyone who, who is working on their confidence, find those opportunities where you can shine, where you can show what you're capable of and, and do your very best at it. Uh, because you never know who's watching, you never know uh, what opportunity could be around the corner, um, but it does take, you know, uh, submitting that application. I'll tell you a great story. When I first was applying to the NASA Dating Nuts program, I, uh, I, I didn't apply for a year. A friend of mine had come to me and she, she was already working in the program and she said, I, I think that you should apply. I think this could be really great for you. I had not been working in the space industry ever before. And it was not something that I, I had thought to even pursue. And so when she came to me and said she thought that I should apply, I, I did not take it as seriously as I should have. And it took me a year to work up the nerve, uh, a year to submit my application. And I'm so glad that I did because now I am an NASA data knot. And uh, overcoming that, it, it taught me a lot about just having the confidence to even toss your name in the hat. And, and you never know what could be on the other side of that fear. So to anyone working on your confidence, know that it's so, it's so impactful and powerful if you can, if you can rise and, and make sure that yes, you're being heard, you're speaking up, and you're, and you're uh, tossing your name out there, you can absolutely get anything done. That's such a great message uh, for anybody of any age, whether you are a teenager, someone in your 30s, or even older, because I suppose we all go through confidence wobbles throughout our lives, particularly when you are working in a field that is dominated, be that by men, white people, any particular group of people, it can be quite difficult. One of the best things for me that's happened in the STEM arena over the last number of years has been the arrival of that little A. So turning STEM into STEAM and building in the arts and the artistic mind into that. And I think that has opened the door for quite a few people who may have done exactly what you've just said there. Think, oh, I'm not a scientist or I'm not techie or I don't care about the latest whatever phone it is. They've discounted themselves from an industry because they don't fit a certain perception. But adding that A has really opened doors and opportunities for a lot of people. What are your thoughts on it? I think that adding that A is so important because one, it does open the door for a lot of people that may have thought that, well, I can't work in science, I can't work in technology because that's not technically my background. But if, if you are a creative, this industry absolutely does need you. And I do think that some, some of the most creative people already do work in STEM. Um, there is a lot of work that has to be done with innovative thinking. Um, when you're the kind of person that can think outside of the box automatically, that's, you know, that it's creative and it's advantageous, I think, in this industry. Um, I like to consider myself an innovator for the future. And when you're working and you're dealing with creating a better future for all, it does require creative out of the box thinking and um, sometimes I get to work with people that uh, may, may be digital creators 
They create visualizations, uh, graphs that are under that could be understood by by anybody. And um, having those creative uh, uh, people on your teams, which I often do work with people that are are quite creative. I think it's all it only adds to this industry. And to be an engineer, you know, you're often going to be uh, thinking outside the box anyway. So the the transition from STEM to STEAM, I think, is actually a more accurate depiction of this industry. You mentioned there about innovating for the future, and I love that term. I, it makes my heart happy to think that we are innovating to the, towards the future. We're not just accepting whatever you know deck has already been dealt. A lot of that um, can start from a very young age. So you mentioned when you were 15, you kind of got your, your first exposure to the world of STEM. We can do a lot more to encourage children of primary school age here in Ireland and up to get involved. I know that you're very familiar with some of the great Irish success stories. We have some brilliant young Irish innovators who are really leading the way. When you think of the future and innovating for the future, what should we all be doing, regardless of who we are, what we are, what age we are, to try and help to a more productive and hopefully happier future? Well, I think that really taking inventory of social problems that need to be addressed. And a, good, a question that sometimes that I get is, well, if we have such a beautiful, amazing planet, um, planet Earth that we live on, why, don't, why doesn't NASA, for example, um, use all of their efforts to just focus on uh, creating a, a, a better Earth? Um, as opposed to space exploration and, and human exploration. Uh, and I think that, one, there's a lot of efforts being made by, F, uh, by NASA to do a lot of innovation here for Earth to, to sustain the planet that we have in the best way possible. We do know global climate change is real. There are things that ha are happening all over the Earth that, that you can look back years and years before, and it, it wasn't happening in the same way. And uh, being able to use science on, on such a wide scale for good, for the good of the planet, that's one really amazing way to help to create a better future for everyone. And a lot of the projects that uh, our innovators in space apps work on are earth science and environment, uh, environmentally related. And when you're talking about the historic wildfires that we've seen at unprecedented rates all over the world the past couple of years, um, in Australia, they've made the news. Uh, the, the California fires have made the news. Uh, we see it, it, it's, it's happening at unprecedented rates. And some of the things that we ask our innovators of is working on projects that can uh, help combat these kinds of issues. Um, sea levels rising and glaciers melting, uh, things like that. These are um, things that we can track using, for example, satellites that can tell us a lot of information about the rate in which these things are happening. So when it comes to anyone who's thinking of innovate, innovating for good, think about the social problems, um, the everyday problems, maybe even your, your local community, um, where you can identify a problem and you can observe what's happening over time, and you start to think of different ways to address these issues. That is one small step towards innovating for the future, a better future for everyone. Yeah, and when you mention those issues, when you write them down on a list or when you hear them listed like that, you can kind of sit back going, oh my days, there's so much to be done. But equally, a lot of those things that you've mentioned, you know, we can all make small steps in our local community, being conscious of whether we use the green bin or the black bin or the brown bin, if we do a local litter pick, there are small steps and very often the action that's taken at community level can have a big uh, impact on the, on the wider picture, can't it really? Oh, absolutely. Something as small as a recycling drive or even just making sure that you are uh, recycling, composting, um, those are small steps that are really, uh, uh, you know, you're participating in a system that's much greater than you, right? And um, as a st systems thinker, that's one, one way that I can describe it is we do have some systems in place, but if you're not partaking in the system, then you're not helping. Uh, to create that future where, you know, it's more sustainable. But something as simple as making sure you are separating your recyclables, you're doing your composting, if you compost, um, that is some, a small way to participate in a bigger system that is, is going to help the environment. And um, you know, something even as small as, uh, 
uh, riding in a car with a coworker. You know, that's another easy way to reduce emissions uh, on, a, on a very simple level just for yourself. Um, making sure that you turn off the water spout when, um, when you're brushing your teeth as, as opposed to leaving it running the entire time. When we all participate, even in a small way, in these systems, it's much bigger than us. And, and we're doing a lot to be able to reduce uh, some of the sustainability issues that we do see cropping up all over the world. So I started by mentioning the key question of this year's ESB Science Blast, and that is what can STEM education offer a changing world? What would be your sort of final thoughts on that question as we you know, take time to reflect maybe this evening or tomorrow or over the weekend? I think that STEM education gives you a powerful skill set to be able to contribute to, uh, to innovation for, for creating a better world. I think that STEM education, learning at these kinds of tools can really just aid you in being able to pursue anything that it is that you want. Whether you wanna work in fashion, whether you wanna work as an engineer, you want to work um, in finance, uh, I know so many engineers that work across a lot of different industries, but because they have this science and uh, engineering background, they're able to contribute so much more because they have a skill set that is analytical, that shows people deep down how, how uh, they can contribute from a very technical kind of way. And so for anyone, I, I would recommend to anyone to, to, yeah, to maybe try a coding course, maybe, maybe try a different kind of math course that you didn't think you were able to do it. I guarantee if you take the time and, and you just try something new, even if it's not for you in the end, you'll have learned something about yourself. And I think that's the most important th thing that you can do at the end of the day. Yeah, no, it's definitely a brilliant message. Again, it sort of feeds back into that thing of even if it's outside your comfort zone, even if it's, you're not sure if it's for you, give it a go anyway. Like, what's the worst that could happen? Um, as I alluded to earlier on, 2020 and into 2021 has been an incredibly turbulent period. It's been a bit scary uh, for quite a few people around the world. What are you most looking forward to uh, when life gets to whatever the new normal will look like? Ooh, what am I most looking forward to? Well, I'd love to be able to obviously travel a little bit more for fun again. I haven't seen some of my family members in quite some time. Um, so I'm looking forward to being able to travel a bit more. And I think just, uh, you know, this, this whole um, pandemic has it's really shown me that I, we used to take so many things for granted. Just being able to get together, um, have a laugh, you know, maybe go to a concert. Um, something, some of those simple things I think I took for granted. But now I think I, I have a new appreciation for being able to just come together uh, in, in my community. And, um, but at the same time, a silver lining has been that you can connect in new ways. I think if anything, one of the most important things that I've learned that this past pandemic is that we are adaptable and that there's so many new uh, innovative ways that we've come, we've come up with being able to do all sorts of different programming, even like the Science Blast. The fact that I'm able to participate in this all the way from Washington, D.C. is so amazing. So I, I thank you guys for having me because uh, this has just been an absolutely awesome experience. Well, Fanula, it's been a joy to have you here. Your uh, enthusiasm is just infectious, even all the way from uh, Washington. Thank you so much for joining us here at uh, ESB Science Blast 2021. Thank you all. And ESB are the proud title sponsor of ESB Science Blast. ESB is committed to supporting STEM education and learning as a way of helping young people to develop key skills for the 21st century. I'm pleased to welcome Pat O'Doherty, CEO of ESB. Thanks, Jess. And thank you to all involved in making this year's virtual ESB Science Blast one to remember. It's something we're really proud of. This is not just about creating a pipeline of future talent, but ensuring that we have a scientifically literate society that can ask the critical questions and make informed choices. And in a world of so much turbulence and uncertainty, it has never been more important to encourage young people to question and challenge the world around them to make this world and the society we live in a better place. Thank you, Pat. We look forward to our continued partnership with ESB, who share our deep commitment to STEM education. 
And a final thank you to our funders, our supporters and teachers. A very special thank you to our contributors for their time today and inspiring discussion. And to you for joining us. Thank you.